Hello everybody. So lately I've been doing some very basic redstone and I came up with this uh, nice drop the hopper clock. Um, as always with basic stuff like that there's a very good chance that somebody else um, found it before but it's still not very well known. Uh, you won't find it on a wiki and it's quite useful as I found out. So later I show some uh, applications for it. So it's quite an interesting clock. It would give out a signal every eight game ticks or four redstone ticks. Um, yeah, and it works like this. So at the moment, this hopper is blocked, and as soon as I yeah, unblock it, um, it would transfer the item into the dropper. Then it takes two game ticks uh, before the uh, comparator has a signal, and then it butt powers the dropper and the item is sent back after in total six game ticks because droppers always have four game ticks delay. And yeah, let's see it in action. So you can see you get a signal every uh, eight game ticks, uh, yeah, which is quite interesting because normally um, droppers, so if you sh uh, send an item into a hopper, it always takes seven uh, game ticks before the item is sent back. Um, uh, there's a monos table, for example, so let's slow down the game a bit. So I would shoot the item into this hopper and then it stays there for seven game ticks before it's uh, yeah, transferred back down to the dropper. So as you can see, I get the output and then it's on for one, two, three, four, but yeah, alternates between three and four. That, that means uh, the signal is on for seven game ticks. And yeah, in this case, the item would remain in the hopper only for two game ticks before it's sent back into the hopper. So I didn't look at the game code or anything, but my speculation is uh, hoppers normally, if you have more items in the hopper, they would transfer items every eight game ticks. And I think the hopper just uh, yeah, thinks that he needs to transfer items uh, on a regular basis and then sends it back after eight game ticks again. That's how you could trick the hopper into transferring the item faster when it's sent back from the dropper. And yeah, it's quite interesting. So you would get a signal which is on for three redstone ticks and off for one redstone tick, which is uh, quite interesting uh, for normal comparator clock. It's uh, quite hard, or not quite hard, you need more additional uh, components to make a signal like this. And you could also invert it, for example, uh, here would have a one redstone tick pulse every uh, four redstone ticks. Yeah, and a uh, practical application for this is, uh, for example, to slow down uh, a minecart. So let's do normal speed again and turn it on. So if I would ride over this, I would be slowed down a little bit. And the speed is perfect, for example, for a sheep farm. So over here we have just some detector rails that go, on, go into this RS null ledge. So the redstone block is sent over, turning on the clock. If we drive over the next one, we could send the redstone, black, redstone block back and yeah, turn it off again. And the speed is perfect to shear the sheep. So as you can see, if I drive by, uh, it's perfect speed and I get every single sheep. And yeah, you could expand this obviously and make a very long line of sheep, which could be quite useful for an, a sheep farm. So here you can see what happens if you would send the item back later. So the item is sent from the hopper to the dropper, then you have four game ticks of delay um, until this block is powered, and then additional four. Uh, Game ticks of delay because the dropper has that much delay, so the item is sent back after eight game ticks, uh, which is only two game ticks more than with the uh, clock I showed at the beginning. And then the item would stay in the hopper for seven uh, uh, more game ticks. So it's basically the same as uh, just a normal uh, pair of hopper clock. And yeah, as you can see, you get the output at the same time. So only if, if you would immediately power the dropper again. Uh, when the comparator signal is on, um, you get the 8 game tick signal instead of the 15 game tick signal. And later I also show a, a nice application for a 15, uh, uh, for a signal every 15 game ticks. Um, but let's get back to the to this clock, and yeah, this is quite useful because you can make it 
unvitalable. So if you put a non stackable item in there, you would get signal strength two. Then you just need another rail, and then you can have um, yeah. Then it's one vitalable, and you can have hopper clocks next to each other with a, a different timing, which might be useful for something. One uh, application could be, um, this was a challenge by Gnembon MC. Uh, he wanted a one wide tidable dropper tower that would transfer items at hopper speed, so meaning every eight game ticks. And yeah, this system can do that. Um, so yeah, let's see how it works. So you take an output here, which will turn on the hopper dropper clock, and then it powers this block via this redstone block. This is but powered, updated by the redstone, and this is powered again directly by the uh, block again. Then we have to alternate it on the other side. Um, yeah, so you need redstone on both sides of the dropper tower, which is not that great. Um, but if you're desperate for something like this, maybe it's useful for you. So let's see in action. Put in some items into those chests, and it would transfer them up. At hopper speed, and as you can see, um, yeah, they are all on a different timing, and there's really nothing that would influ influence the other side. So uh, you can't yeah, power a uh, dropper directly because it would power the dropper next to it, and so on. So that's why it's a little bit complicated. And as you can see, the items go up with hopper speed. Yeah, the other items are already there. So obviously this system uh, I don't think is too useful, but if somebody is really desperate for something, this could be useful. Um, yeah, one note, you couldn't use torches, um, because the speed uh, would be too fast, you would get torch burnout. So you need really need to do that system alternating every three uh, blocks. So this could be another use for this fast hopper dropper clock. So uh, if you have the situation that you have an um, array of droppers where different droppers go in there and the normal approach would be to make a OR gate and the clock on the side so whenever uh, an item is in one of the droppers all of those droppers would be activated. Um, yeah, but with the one wide tidable hopper dropper clock uh, you could make a system where only a single dropper would get activated. And yeah could activate one more. It's no problem at all. So he would only activate a single dropper each time. So that's all I want to show regarding the dropper hopper clock. I'm sure there are other applications for the system. And I want to quickly go back to the um, hopper hopper clock and uh, found a nice application for this one. So you get a signal every 15 game ticks, which is perfect for cobblestone generators. So lava flows every 30 game ticks, and by yeah, doubling the frequency just by using a T flip flop, you will get a, get a signal every 30 game ticks, which is perfect. And it's not possible to make a uh, to get a signal every 30 game ticks, for example, with a comparator clock, because you only get a multiple of two uh, redstone ticks. So you could get a 14 uh, a signal every 14 uh, redstone ticks or 16 redstone ticks. And yeah, let's turn it on. And it looks quite cool. So you can see in the game tick when the cobblestone generates, you would push it out every 30 game ticks. And yeah, that would be quite useful for Skyblock if you would have uh, nether quartz, I guess. But still, um, if you ever want to make a super effective cobblestone generator, uh, I would recommend the uh, hopper hopper clock. Okay. That's all I want to show you today. Hope you found this useful. Have a good day and goodbye.